All right, guys, welcome back to Grow the Earth. Today, I'm going to show you eight fruit trees that you can have for absolutely free. Now, some of these trees are going to either be of from friends. Uh, you can actually buy these off the internet for most, most uh, purposes. Or you're going to find them just out in the wild. So guys, the first tree that I'm going to show you that you can get for absolutely free, or actually for very little money at that, is going to be a fig tree. Now this fig tree, the reason you can get it for absolutely free is if you have a friend, acquaintance, or even there are some groups that you can join that will share you cuttings for a fig. Because a, a fig tree will grow from a cutting, will produce fruit. Actually, this was actually grown from a cutting. And it is very, very easy to make. If you've ever dealt with cuttings, basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take off the epidermis of the, the, the stalk there, and you're going to add rooting hormone, put it in the ground, keep it watered, and it will grow roots. And that's gonna fall true for actually a lot of these different plants that I'm gonna show you. Now right next to that fig tree, you have a mulberry tree. Now yes, this mulberry tree does make fruit that has seeds on it, much like the fig, but they are extremely hard to grow from seed. They have such small seeds and the germination rates of those is very poor. Again, you can make this tree growing from a cutting. Now, I don't know about in everyone's area, but we have wild mulberry trees around here. And they come in a lot of varieties. You have a white, you have a black, and you even have a red mulberry. And all you have to do is go up and find a low-lying limb, cut it off, bring it home, and do exactly what I told you to do with that, with that fig tree. And this will grow again. It's growing a new plant. This is actually a cutting I took off of the trees that are actually right behind my, uh, my house here. Because we are getting these trees in order to plant on a piece of property that we have. Because out there we're going to make a food forest and that's what we're using these for. Now the other good thing is, is once you have one of these trees, you can continue to take cuttings off of these trees as time goes. So once that gets a little bit bigger, you take a cutting off of it and you can plant it and you can grow another tree and another tree and another tree. If you have a full size of pretty much any one of these trees, you can continue to make unlimited trees from that one tree. And they will all have the same genetics and they will all produce fruit. That holds true for our blueberry here. This blueberry is one that we actually bought. Now again, you don't have to buy because Again, you can take a cutting of this, you put it in your soil with your, uh, your rooting hormone and so forth, and this will start a new tree. This will start a new bush, this will start a new plant. Now, a little bit, you know, differing is this banana tree behind me here, because this is actually a pup. Now, when you have a banana tree, now whether that be yours or a friend's, when that plant, when that tree is happy, it's going to send off pups. Now inversely, a banana tree is a little bit different. It has a rhizome, uh, which is going to, it almost grows like a big water chestnut underground. Now when that rhizome is extremely happy, the way it reproduces is it actually sends off other shoots from that rhizome to make another tree. So you will have a pup that comes out off to the side of that main tree. And once it reaches a certain height, you can actually take a shovel and what you're going to do is you're going to cut off that, that new pup and part of that rhizome. You put it in a pot or you plant it somewhere else and you have a whole brand new tree. And each one of these is a clone of the mother. It works similar to the way a strawberry reproduces by sending out runners, but it does all this underground. The best part is, is if you have somebody who has a banana tree and you know they have a banana tree that produces bananas, 
ask them, I guarantee you they will have pups that they are just going to be willing to give away. Uh, we have one tree that we brought two, bought two years ago. I've gotten two pups that have turned into trees like this, and I have three more that are on the ground, in, uh, still attached to the mother, that I haven't cut away yet, that I'm going to need to put in pots very soon. So this is something you can get absolutely free just by knowing someone with a banana tree. Now the next one we have here is a mango. Now, when you buy a mango at the store, you can get this from a store-bought mango. You can get this from, say your friends have mangoes, ask them to save you a seed. And what you're gonna see is once you get away all that flesh, you're gonna be left with a hard seed. Now that hard seed is only a shell. When you carefully cut away that shell, you're gonna find a meaty seed inside of it. It looks like a huge bean. You can germinate that with some wet paper towel in a Ziploc bag. You can put it directly in the soil and keep it moist. It'll germinate that way, but it will grow a new tree. Now be warned that not all of those trees that come up are going to be fertile. It's kind of a chance you take. So if you're planning on having this to have mangoes, then you need to grow quite a few of them and let them grow in order to make different, different trees. Because not only do you have certain ones that are gonna be sterile, but you also, you've gotta have a male and a female to make mangoes. So, you know, that's kind of a, kind of a hard deal to take because you're gonna to have to let these grow for quite a few years before you're gonna know if it's actually gonna make fruit. Now, one of the last ones we have here is a papaya. Now, if you've ever bought a papaya at the store, you cut it open and you're just gonna have a bunch of little bitty brown seeds inside of it. Now, I will tell you, they are hard to germinate. Um, we had, uh, out of the, the same fruit, we had a batch that I planted about 50 of these in a little seed tree and we got one out of that. We have since replanted in that same tray and I have like nine of them that came up. Uh, and this was a seed tray of like 24. So, you know, the, the germination is kind of spotty. You definitely want to make sure that your seeds are really dried out because that can make a real issue with your germination efforts. And you'll have a little bit of seed like this. Now, one thing about these trees is they are very quick growing. If you do some research, this is one of the fastest growing, growing trees in the world. This, can, this thing can grow up to four foot or so a year in the right conditions with the right sunlight and nutrients. I believe after a year, these will actually start putting out fruit. Now, I think the second or third year is when they really start putting on fruit to where it's gonna be a nice harvest, but you should get one or two after about a year of it being in good to very good conditions. All right guys, so we've now moved into my destroyed garden. Uh, yeah, unfortunately I'm here along Texas Gulf Coast and we got hit pretty hard by Burl and it destroyed a lot of my garden. And in another video, I'm gonna show you exactly what we're gonna do. And we're gonna use this as a new beginning instead of a tragedy, right? So what we have here is this is actually an apricot tree. Now, one of the funny things about an apricot tree is much like a fig and a couple of the other trees I showed you, is this will grow from a cutting. Now, uh, you're supposed to wait to do this until in the fall. And actually, that's going to apply to most of those plants over there. You want that to be not have any leaves on it whenever you cut off a limb in order to make a new tree out of but this will grow from a cutting, just like those other trees, and you'll get wonderful apricots off of it. Now I do have one bonus, which is actually going to be a vine that you can grow from a cutting. All right guys, so our last one in our bonus, and the reason I didn't include this is because this is actually a vine, not a tree, is a grape tree. Now again, you wait for this to dry back in your fall. 
And actually this one's a little overgrown because I didn't realize that you were supposed to cut these back in order to make them grow fruit better. But you wait for it to die back, you find you a good piece of hardwood, you cut it off, you put it in the ground, and that's what you're going to get. You're going to get another grape tree just like this one. It's a clone. Most of the times when you see them in your, your big box stores, they're going to be in a little bag of soil and you're going to have a little dead stick sticking out of it. And they're going to say it's going to be either a white grape or a Concord grape or something to that effect. That's what they've done. They've got these big overgrown uh, plants that they're cutting back year over year and they're making new plants out of them to sell to you for nine, ten dollars a piece. If you've got a friend with a grape tree, every fall, every winter, he's going to cut that thing back and you can just ask him, hey, let me have one of those cuttings and you can make your own tree. Now this falls true for also your blackberry, your raspberry, and any other vining plant like this. Uh, this even goes to your flowering plant, you know, your flowering vines, you know, or even an ivy or things like that. You can take cuttings of those and make you another plant. Same thing. If it's a blackberry or a raspberry or one of those trees, uh, it actually grows canes every year. And in the, the spring, whenever it starts sending out new canes, you can take cuttings of those and make you a new plant. So guys, thank you for joining me today. This was talking about how God has made things so easy for us to get fruit just by, you know, doing a, a, a transplant, making a clone. God's made them these ways so that if, uh, like a storm that came through that has wreaked havoc, when it knocks down a tree, those trees can get into the soil and they can make another tree. The same thing, you know, just like us. Whenever we're knocked down, sometimes it's not a time for sadness and for giving up. It's a time for new beginnings. It's a time for more growth. It's time for a new start, a new tree, right? So guys, again, I thank you for joining me today. I ask you as always to pray over your family, pray over your garden, and have a great day.